Well, throughout Central Texas and around the nation, business leaders, business owners, and managers are in the process of making important decisions. And these are decisions about whether to hire, whether to expand their operations, whether to invest in new equipment, or whether to hold off until the economic indicators maybe are a bit more steady. Texas is very blessed to have stronger job creation and stronger economic growth than just about any other part of the country. Still, the decisions that face business leaders here and around our nation are not easy ones. And our guest speaker today is uniquely qualified to provide a timely report on the economy. Mr. Fisher is the president and CEO of the Federal Reserve Bank of Dallas, and he assumed his current position in 2005. He is a member of the Federal Open Market Committee, which is the Federal Reserve's principal monetary policy-making group. Mr. Fisher is the former vice chair of Kissinger and McClarty Associates. He began his career in 1975 at Brown Brothers Harriman, and then he became assistant to the Secretary of Treasury during the Carter administration. In 1987, he created Fisher Capital Management and Fisher Ewing Partners. From 1997 to 2001, Mr. Fisher was Deputy U.S. Trade Representative with the rank of Ambassador, and in that role he oversaw the implementation of NAFTA, as well as agreements with Vietnam, Korea, Japan, Chile, and Singapore. He attended the U.S. Naval Academy, graduated with honors from Harvard University, he also studied at Oxford, and received his MBA degree from Stanford University. So it is our honor and our privilege and our opportunity today to welcome Mr. Richard W. Fisher. Thank you, Doug. And, uh, thank you, Michael, for explaining your institution. One of your colleagues said it was so good. But he's worried because a lot of his clients are seated with your guys here in this room. So I do want to recognize the fact that we have many bankers in this room. Uh, since we have so many members of the press board here, I want to remind them that only one bank failed in my district. <laughs> Texas has the best bankers in their country. So I want all the bankers in the room. an old friend, uh, Mike Powers, because he called me yesterday, actually called me last week to tell me about what was maybe going to happen Jim, with Emerson. And uh, the mayor, Pike and I have been friends since we were embryos. That's how far <laughs> we are. We're both ancient, but Jim, we're very proud of your decision. Now, here's the thing. Some people, you're going to create 125 net new jobs here, but you're going to have quite a few people here. You move some from Austin to Round Rock. What I'd like you to do is move everything from Boston to Round Rock. <laughs> so we're working on that. Now, uh, just as you explained your operation so eloquently and so good, before I get to what I know you all want to talk about, I'm going to take advantage of having you here in this audience and having a captured group, and, uh, particularly as uh, Lynn digest her chocolate cake here. <laughs> I'll tell you what I do for a living. This right here is what's known as a Federal Reserve note. You may refer to it as a dollar bill. And if you look closely at the face of what you would call a dollar bill, what we call a Federal Reserve note, you'll see that there are four numbers in each corner. There's also a concentric circle. Now, in this case of this bill, there are four 11s. There is a concentric circle around the letter K. The outer circle says Federal Reserve Texas, and the inner circle says Bank of Dallas. Now, for those of you that remember the Pike, I know you don't, the English alphabet. <laughs> K is the 11th letter in the alphabet. And I represent and I have the privilege of being president of the Federal Reserve Bank of Dallas. Uh, which has branches in San Antonio and in El Paso and in a little city called Houston. In fact, Blake 
is standing here, uh, right up around right here, as he's head of our San Antonio branch, and our chairman, Steve Vandergrift, is seated at the end of the table here. Um, so we're responsible for administering and running the payment system of the Federal Reserve, the 11th Federal Reserve District. There are 12 Federal Reserve banks in the United States, and the letters on the bills, A, which has four number ones, is Boston, B is New York, four number twos, no Soviet spy could have figured out this secret. <laughs> and, uh, this was a system set up in 1913 under an act of Congress. Still operates the way it does. Each $1 bill, each Federal Reserve note, bears the imprint of the Federal Reserve Bank. Um, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. The ones with the letter K have greater nominal value than all the rest. <laughs> now, the economic activity of the 11th Federal Reserve District, which I have the pleasure of being the CEO and the president of an enormously able staff, includes roughly 27 million people in an area that covers 360,000 square miles. Uh, most of it's Texas, about 96% of our output. We have the wooded areas of Louisiana, a little bit of western New Mexico. And uh, we have an economic output that only recently was surpassed by India. I want you to think about that. The 27 million people, 96% of them are Texas, for years outproduced the one plus billion people of India. We produce roughly the same as Australia. We're a mighty, powerful force. And we are driven, of course, in the old days by energy. We still have the benefit of enjoying our energy technology and what drives the state. But as you know here in Round Rock, and you can see it on that water tower when you come in, even though that address needs to be corrected, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> um, we're driven by high tech, and we're driven by exports. Nothing gave me greater pleasure than to see an article in the Wall Street Journal the other day talking about the fact that the Gulf Coast, from an export-import standpoint, is becoming the most important coast in the United States. In fact, we surpassed California seven years ago in terms of being the largest trading state in the nation. So I guess the question is, what, first of all, does the Federal Reserve do for those 27 million people over that 360,000 square miles of territory that we have responsibility for? And I want to tell you a little bit about that. The first thing we do is we provide folding money. That is the cash that you need, like that dollar bill that I pulled out, the ones and the twos and the fives and the tens and the twenties and fifties and hundreds. In the first quarter of this year, the Dallas Federal Reserve Bank, operating through its uh, vaults in Dallas and in Houston and in El Paso and uh, also its money operations in San Antonio, received in about 1.5 billion bank notes worth $27 billion in face value. We use very mammoth machines to scan the cash at an average rate of about 100,000 of them per hour. We process them so they can be shipped uh, from our vaults to the banks throughout the district and provide you and the other citizens in Round Rock and the rest of Texas and parts of Louisiana and New Mexico with folding money. Of course, in addition to making sure there's sufficient amount in circulation, we have to make sure that your money is valid and looks respectable. So each month we call few hundred counterfeit bills, but we pluck out about 36 million worn bills that live a full life and we shred them. We uh, give them out to school kids as confetti. <laughs> I haven't found one yet who's trying to glue them all back together. <laughs> if someone can figure it out, we're going to hire them. Be very good. And we basically either do that or we send them off to what I call money heaven and we replace them with new Christmas. We used to process things called checks. Now, Jim, you're too old to know what a check is. You, know, you do know what a check is. It's young people that have no idea like what a check is. Uh, in fact, in 2009, we processed 120 million paper checks at the Dallas Fed. But since the use of paper checks has been and will continue to be on a substantial decline as consumers and businesses take up, and particularly young people, their electronic counterparts, uh, the Federal Reserve Board and the 12 Federal Reserve banks decided to consolidate all our paper check operations, of which there were four, one of them was Dallas. We gave them all the Federal Reserve Bank of Cleveland. You know why? Because we felt they lost LeBron James, they had nothing else to do. 